In this video, I'm going to discuss how the debt of an S corporation affects a shareholder's basis. Now, a major difference between partnerships and S corporations is that with a partnership, when the partnership borrows money, that generally increases a partner's basis. Whereas with an S corporation, when the S corporation borrows money, this usually has no effect on a shareholder's basis. Now, there are a couple exceptions, which we're going to get to. But the general rule is the S corporation goes out and borrows money from a bank. That's not going to have any effect on the basis of the shareholders. Now, the reason for that is that shareholders aren't responsible for the debts of a corporation. So let's do an example and then we'll dive into a little more uh, complexity. So we'll start simple. Tom owns 25% of the company Beer Mittens, and Tom has a basis of $600,000. If Beer Mittens then goes out and borrows $200,000 from Bank of America, and Tom's share of that debt is 50 grand, if this is a partnership, if Beer Mittens is a partnership, Tom's basis is going to increase from 600,000 to 650,000 based on Tom's share of the partnership's debts. Okay, so the partnership's debts increase by 200,000. Tom's share is 50,000. Tom's basis goes from 600,000 to 650. If Beer Mittens is an S corporation and not a partnership, in that case, Tom's basis is going to be unchanged. It's going to remain at $600,000. Now, there are a couple of exceptions. Okay, so again, the general rule is that corporate borrowings do not affect the shareholder's basis. However, if the shareholder, in this case, Tom himself, loans money to the S corporation, okay, and this is a bona fide loan, actual loan, Tom is actually trying to get repayment and so forth. So it's a legitimate loan that Tom makes to the S corporation. Then the shareholder, in this case, Tom, will have a loan basis. So then Tom would need to track his stock basis and his loan basis, okay? So again, this is the shareholder lending money to the S corporation. This isn't the S corporation going out and borrowing money from Bank of America or Wells Fargo. This is the shareholder making a loan to the S corporation. In that case, the shareholder gets a loan basis. And we will talk about how to deal with loan basis in a second, but let me do the second exception. If the shareholder, in this case, Tom, guarantees a loan to the S corporation and and is called upon to make a payment as a result of the guarantee that he made okay in the going back to the example of the Bank of America okay so if the S corporation borrows money from Bank of America and then Tom guarantees that loan Tom tells Bank of America hey I am guaranteeing this loan I'm personally guaranteeing this loan and then later as a result of that guarantee Tom has to fork over some money. Okay, he has to make a payment. In that case, Tom would get a loan basis. Okay, so let's talk about how loan basis works and then we'll do an example. So with loan basis, any losses that are passed to the shareholder, because remember it's a pass-through entity, uh, losses of the S corporation gonna pass through to the shareholder. Uh, so they're first gonna reduce the shareholder's stock basis. So if the, share, if the S corporation has a loss, Tom gets a share of that loss. First, Tom's stock basis is going to go down. And then if the stock basis goes to zero, any remaining share of the loss is going to reduce loan basis. So first, basically, any losses first take down the stock basis and only then do they reduce loan basis if the shareholder has a loan basis. Now, if the loan basis, if the debt basis is decreased, by, by, by the way here, debt basis, loan basis, I'm using the terms interchangeably, so I don't mean to confuse you. So if the loan basis is decreased, if the debt basis is decreased, and then later there's a subsequent net increase from basis adjustments, okay? So then that will later increase the debt basis before any effect on the stock basis, but only up to its original amount. I know it's really confusing. We will get to, I'm gonna do an example with this exact uh, thing in a second. So basically, if you've decreased the loan basis for some reason, you, 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 you had an example up here where you reduce the stock basis to zero, then you reduce the loan basis, then the loan basis, so you've, you've decreased it, and then later there's an increase in basis, your debt basis will go back up to its original amount before you increase the stock basis. Again, I'll do an example of that in a second. Now, final uh, thing about loan basis, any distributions in excess of stock basis. So let's say there's some distributions. The shareholder stock basis is now zero, and there's a distribution beyond that. Stock basis is zero, and there's a distribution beyond that. It is not going to decrease the shareholder's debt basis, aka loan basis. Yeah. So 
Let's do an example uh, that I just talked about that's a little complicated. So Clorinda, let's say she's a shareholder of the company Tortilla Blankets and that this is an S corporation and that she has initially she's got she's got a stock basis of zero at the beginning of our example and she has a $20,000 loan basis aka debt basis. She lent the money uh, lent $20,000 to the S corporation and that's how she had this uh, $20,000 a loan basis. Okay, so zero dollar stock basis, twenty thousand dollar loan basis. Now, that so that's the beginning. This year, okay, so now we're gonna have some some more action. This year, the S corporation is gonna lose money. Her share of the loss is fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, so forget about her percentage ownership, all those details. I'm just telling you, her share of the loss is fifteen thousand. Now, her stock basis is zero, right? Her stock basis is zero. But because she has a loan basis, right? Remember, you can't deduct losses unless you have basis. Normally, you say, well, I got a stock basis of zero. I got a problem here. But she has a loan basis, okay? So she that loan that loss can pass through, but it's going to take down her loan basis from $20,000 to $5,000, okay? So the $20,000 is going to be decreased by her share of the loss, so that loss is going to pass through to her. She's going to get to deduct that loss, provided there's not other lo uh, loss limitations that apply, you know, passive loss limitations, things like that, excess business loss, in any of it. We'll, we won't go into all that. So her share of the loss is 15000 Loan basis initially was 20000 20000 minus 15000 Her new loan basis is 5000 So she got to take that loss because she had loan basis, even though her stock basis was zero. Next year, however, the S corporation is going to have a profit instead of a loss. Her share of the profit is 60 grand. So now what do we do? Well, this comes back to th this thing here I said was kind of complicated. This is the example. First, of that 60 grand, her share of the profit, first, uh, the 15,000, remember we reduced her loan basis from 20 to 5? First, we're going to take it back from 5 to 20. So her loan basis is going to become 20,000 again. So basically of that 60,000, 15,000 is going to increase her loan basis. But your loan basis cannot go beyond the original amount. The original amount we said was 20,000. So she's going to go from 5,000, okay? She's going to go up to 20,000. But then now we saw we have 45,000 left cuz 60,000 minus 15,000 is 45. So what do we do with the remaining 45,000? That is going to increase her stock basis. We said initially her stock basis was zero. If it increases by 45,000, her new stock basis would be $45,000.